Hi everybody, thank you for joining me and Robin today. Today we're going to ask her some questions and follow up with her progress. She is a, she's a graduate, she currently has her four year degree and she's going back to school and she's in the process of picking a school she wants to go to right now and we've had some previous broadcasts talking about the different schools and her talking to their financial aid office and asking questions and researching their website about what type of financial aid they offer, including scholarships. So today we're going to follow up on that. But first I want to go ahead and let you know that this webinar is being sponsored by scholarshipmembershipsite.com. And what it is, is it's a place where people can go for a dollar a day. They can become members and they certainly can have access to me. We can have conversations with Google Hangout and dive deep into some of the questions that you have. So, Robin, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody what you've been doing the past couple of days. Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I have been uh, looking into the specific financial breakdown of uh, the second school that I'm interested in, which is Smith School of Social Work. Um, so that's one part of what I've been doing, the financial stuff. And I also uh, booked uh, an over-the-phone one-hour appointment with an academic counselor just to go over any questions about the program I have. So, um, let's see, let's get that out of the way first. So first I'm going to be having this uh, one-hour interview over the phone next Wednesday, uh, the tw August 21st, um, from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. because they're on the East Coast and I work. So I'm going to get up early and, uh, yes, I'm going to sit down and, and have an interview with them and, and think of, or maybe Crystal can help me think of some questions that I'm not thinking about asking. I'm going to have a few in mind, <laughs> but, um, I think there's a lot that I... Yeah, and I, I can easily get overwhelmed with where to even begin. So I think over the next week, definitely uh, writing down the ideas and then breaking them down so that when I get on this hour call, it's it's beneficial for me and not just me kind of being all over the place. Uh, so there's that. So that's cool. Yes, it is. And that's kind of what this Google Hangout is about. It's very informal. We kind of have a direction as far as what we're going to be talking about. Normally we meet once a week, but we went ahead and met a couple days ago. So I'm sure not a lot has happened within the past couple of days that we've talked. So I'm sure today will probably be a short Google Hangout. Or usually they're running about 40, 45 minutes. So we'll just see. Um, I certainly do have some points I do want to mention. But I don't know, do you have a running list as far as things you want to ask them? And if so, about how many questions do you currently have? I, I, I don't know how many specific questions I have yet. I just have um, kind of like bullet point ideas that I want to go into. And then like questions about the internship. Uh, what that looks like. Um, how that functions. Um, yeah, see, this is why I need to do this because I, I <laughs> I'm gonna break it down. I don't have, I don't have a lot of questions uh, right now at this moment written down. So I, that's something I'm gonna do before Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Now, my, one of the things that I have personally noticed is when you ask better questions, you tend to get better answers. Yes. So <laughs> I think that it's really important to sit down and take the time to write down the questions, review it maybe once every other day or once a day to see what questions you have. Um, certainly with this particular case, the internship is an area I'm really concerned about because this program, in the way that you'd be flying back, you'd be flying to the school uh, for three summers and then be doing like an internship program and getting credits for it. I certainly do want you to sit down and think about whether or not ask really good questions about the internship because I think that's going to affect your ability to work and if you can stay with your job or look for a different job or what's going to happen. So some of the questions that just pop up off the top of my mind is, you know, what percentage of students get a paid internship while they're going to school? And do students tend to stay with the same internship programs 
throughout the two or three years, or do they are they encouraged to change different programs so they can get a wider variety of experience, or is it encouraged that they change within the organization? So, for example, like Kaiser might have internships. Do you stay with Kaiser the two the full two or three years? Do you stay within the same program, or do you try and move around and do like cardiovascular one day? and then maybe trauma the next, and then maybe another department for your third go-around. Okay. Also, um, as far as internships, uh, what does the school do to try and help students? Are students expected to find their own internship programs, or what does this, the school do to help students? Do they have a list of uh, current providers that they work with? And if you find someone that you want to work with and they're not on that list of providers, mm -hmm. can you approach them? And is there a process to get them approved? Like, do they need to contact the school and the school to contact them to find out more about the program to see if they can make a new connection and you can work someplace you really, really want to? Um, you know, how open is the school to that idea? Um, also, as far as the internships, you know, what is realistic? in terms of pay. Does it vary according to your experience? Does it vary according to that organization? Um, if that organization has paid and non-paid internships, um, I would certainly ask, you know, what is the difference? Do all organizations usually tend to go all non-paid? Or do they have like a combination of both? Or are they usually commonly all paid? Okay, see that, bam, okay. And I like, like I, I like what you said about practicing, because I think that's where I get stuck, is uh, those were all floating around, but they weren't in a nice, organized fashion, and then I also feel scared to say them. So I like the reminder of reviewing the questions every day up until the interview. That's a really helpful tip for me. And, um, yeah, I... I mean, I know I've showed you the list that they have on the website, but I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't even thought of potentially seeing if I could actually have more choice in this process. So I think, yes, that would, that, that's a good idea. I think I'm also thinking, I'm like, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. But, um, yeah. It's always better to have more questions and then dwindle them down and think about them. And I mean, it's one thing right now we're just brainstorming and creating a list of questions, but cer certainly further on in the week as you get closer to your appointment date, you know, that's when you'll want to prioritize your questions, what are the most important ones, or organize them so that they flow. Um, I like to use Microsoft Word just because I like the bullet points. And I like to make each question a bullet point because it's easier for me to copy and paste, paste them and then move them around as far as clumping them together by topic or putting them into like a one, two, three, four number format so it's easier for me to figure out what am I going to do first, second, and third. Um, also, you know, it'll give you a chance to go back and think about the structure of the sentence or what is it that you're really asking. What information are you trying to get, and is the question clear and precise? But right now, I would rather have more questions just to brainstorm. And it's funny because at first I'm like, oh no, I hope I'm not saying this all too fast so you can write it all down. But now that we're able to record it, I know you can go back and rewatch it. So I'm like, Phew. that. You know what? <laughs> Actually, that is a good point because I was also freaking out over here writing all that down. I was like, oh, oh gosh, that's it. that's right. We can rewatch this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. So, so yes. Yeah, so that's the interview um, next Wednesday, 6 a.m. Yes. Now, the other thing is um, the financial breakdown. I got some more clarity around that. Um, okay. Before we go into that, I have one more thing I want to add before we move on to that. Okay. In regards to the questions. Um, one other question I would also ask is, you know, what resources are available or do they recommend for you to look for paid internships? And my thought process is searching for a paid internship might be similar to searching for a job, and there's job search engines. 
So are there search engines that are particular for paid internships or can you use a job search engine and specify that you're interested in a paid internship? And like something that comes to mind off the top of my head is indeed.com, mm -hmm. I-N-D-E-E-D.com. And I know you can type in like a particular job and a location, like a particular city. So I'm wondering if maybe you can play around with that site and find if it has an internship opportunity, if there's some sort of screening filter, like when you search, is there an advanced search where you can uh, limit your search to certain search criteria, things of that nature. I certainly try and play around with it first and foremost. And then based upon what information you find, if there's a lot of internships or not internships, then that's something you could refine your questions and say, you know, what's the best search engine do you recommend or how do you find your internships or this is some of the information I found or this is the internships that I'm interested in and they're paying about X dollars per hour or compensation or whatever it is. You know, is that realistic? Is that what your other students are experiencing? Okay. Okay. All right, so the uh, financial information? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and let's see. I'm just writing one note down. I, you mentioned about the plane ticket, and I forgot to factor that in, so that's going to add more to the cost. Okay. So uh, the academic year runs from June to May. And it's $21,710. Hold on, let me break that down. You said June to May for the academic year, and how much is it? $21,710. Okay. And that would be times two for two full years. And so okay. you don't have to do all the math. It's 42420 Okay. Plus the final semester, or excuse me, sorry, the final summer, which is eight thousand three hundred and fifty. So that all comes to fifty one thousand seven hundred and seventy. Okay. Um, and then there's room and board, and that is three thousand seven hundred and seventy times three because you're there three summers. And that comes up to 11,310. Okay. So the grand total I got, and we might need to check the math, uh, or I might need to check the math, but I got $63,080. Okay. Um, and like I said, I did not even, I forgot to ask about the plane ticket, so I need to go back and ask that. Um, the other thing is room and board. There is a meal plan. Um, they couldn't go into the specifics around it. They just told me to check Smith School's website and check out the dining services and what's available in the summer. So I might have to ask or get someone else on the phone to get more clarity around that because it was a little vague. Um, they also have a requirement of health insurance. And uh, she didn't give me the specific amount because she said if I had health insurance through my job or in, uh, somewhere, um, I could fill out a fee waiver. But it was a requirement in Massachusetts to have health insurance. So that also would be factored in, but I also didn't get a specific number on that. Okay. So that's good because that gives us three other things to factor in. The meal plan, the plane ticket, the health insurance. Um, and then you'll probably come up with a cost of living for the three months. You said it was a three-month program? The summer? Uh, or ten, ten weeks? Ten weeks. Ten weeks, okay. So you probably want to create a budget as far as like shampoo, deodorant, uh, those little knick-knack things that you'll probably be using the ten weeks that you're there. Um, I'm sure you probably won't have a job while you're there for 10 weeks. Um, for all the viewers who are watching, what we're talking about uh, to provide more clarity is she found an opportunity and the school, she goes up there for 10 weeks, 
then she can come back to California in her hometown or nearby and do some volunteer work and then that gets counted towards her school and then she goes back and she's there for a total of three summers and doing classroom work but she's also getting credit for a lot of in the work in the workforce in the field of her choice of her career doing hands-on work as well as getting guidance and checking in with someone from the school yes yeah okay. Yeah, and that's um, so. That's what I have so far. She also mentioned some people do off count off campus housing, but that seems like a whole other thing. Uh, seems like a lot of work, but uh, that might be another option too. Maybe it's cheaper, but uh, it could be. Um, I just think that you're going to have a hard time finding some place that will allow you to live there 10 weeks out of the year unless it's some place that, like a host family that's going to take you in or someone who has a very good relationship with the school. So, um, you know, for right now, I would focus more on the school and if this is a school you really, really want to go to first, um, focus on that and then focus on, you know, getting scholarships to pay for this because a lot of scholarships do help pay for a room and board and it is easier if the scholarship is just written to the school because then the school can apply it towards your tuition, uh, your meal plan, room, board, supplies, and all that other stuff. So, you know, again, I, I would focus on is this a school you want to go to and, you know, now that you're diving in and you're doing more research on this, how do you like this school compared to the first school that you were originally looking at? Yeah, and I like the idea of um, room and board because for me, in my experience, um, I did community college and lived at home, and then I did uh, state school and lived at home and commuted over about an hour and a half each way. Um, um, and so I think my my first reaction to the $3,770 is like, oh my god, well, there's got to be a cheaper way, and it's like, well... But maybe this could be, I, I've never had this experience of like living there and being immersed in school and not working. And that sounds really exciting. Um, but also it's not what I'm used to. So I'm immediately like, okay, well how, you know, this is how I did it before. So, um, yeah. Anyways, it's just. I like the idea just because you're immersed in a different types of college atmosphere and a lot of students that do go to college do have the dorm experience so I think when you interact with people in the world it'll give you another ability to connect with other people because you could say yeah I've had that experience living in the dorm whether it was by myself or with a roommate but I also like the idea too because you know during your downtime I think it's going to be easier for you to network with other people who are going through your same program and to make some new friends and then in the long run those might turn out to be part of your professional acquaintances in your network which is easy to keep in contact with the internet awesome yeah. okay that is the information I have so far Okay. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so I'd certainly make your list of questions, talk to your mom, play devil's advocate with her, see what she has to say, if she has more questions, or, you know, if maybe she wants to refine it differently or get, you know, get another perspective on it. So that's really good. Um, I also like it because that gives us an idea of how much money we need to get for scholarships for you. And we can break that down because that roughly comes out to about 31000 per year. And then, you know, as you get closer to making a decision about what school you're going to you decide you want to go to, I'm going to help you set up some accounts on the Internet. So this way you can start getting information about scholarships. So while you're finishing up, you know, your enrollment process, you'll have different opportunities building that you can look into. Okay. I just don't want to start that process too soon because if you're you're looking at starting in say the spring of next year, I'd rather get you closer into that into November and December when you're getting closer into your school year. Um, 
sorry, not that late. So I want to do about six months. So let's see. Fall usually starts in August, maybe in about September when you want to start applying to the scholarships. So I'll keep a lookout as I'm looking for scholarships for other people, and then I'll send you a shout out or an email or text message and let you know, hey, these are the ones I think that I want you to apply for. Um, I've already done that with a couple of them. I'm not sure if you saw my posts on Facebook. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, just I, I shouted those out because I wanted you to see that there are things that you could be aware of. Um, a lot of the scholarships out there are changing. They're not their traditional scholarships where it's, you know, just submit an essay. There are a lot of volunteer work ones. I'm starting to see more and more with quizzes, um, a wide variety. So I just want you to be aware that they're open and they're out there, and we'll go ahead and get you started on that. Okay. But first, in the next week, just really breaking down bullet points and questions and reviewing them and refining them uh, for the hour interview for next week, right? Right. And the reason I really, really want you to focus on this right now is because finding a paid internship, that's going to help you be able to do your budget and figure out, you know, what are you going to do with your job? Are you temporarily going to leave them? Are you going to work for them part-time? What's that situation going to be? And I think a lot of it's going to depend upon the paid internship. And, you know, it'll help you figure out if you need to spend more time looking for the right internship or, you know, are you going to have to figure out something with your job and how much time do you give them as far as advance notice, as far as your schedule. You still have to have time to apply for the internship. And usually you want to apply to more than one just in case you don't get that one. You have multiple options open. And I think it also boosts your confidence when you're talking to multiple internship programs and you're going through multiple interview processes, you get better at the ones that you probably want the least, and this way you build your confidence so when you get the one that you really, really want, you feel more comfortable talking to people and going through the interview process. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Um, yes, because that is something that I struggle with around job interviews and, and just kind of uh, getting overwhelmed as I do sometimes in these interviews. So like just practicing it and reviewing it and um, yeah and also uh, this is a different type of uh, like interview process. I mean I guess it's similar to jobs but it's it's got a different intent behind it so um, yes. I think a lot of it pretty much is the same or similar. I see the process of writing a scholarship essay, interviewing for a job, or volunteer work as the same. And that probably comes from my personal experience. When I was in high school, I did volunteer work uh, for the Central Valley, Central Valley Business Incubator. And I got that internship because of a teacher said, hey, you know, you're studying business and marketing in our class. I think this would be a good internship opportunity. And, you know, why don't you go ahead and prepare like a resume or let cut two letters of recommendation. I'll make the introduction and then you're on your own. And from that standpoint, that teacher gave me the introduction, but I still had to do it on my own. And, you know, getting the letters of recommendation and putting together a resume, which at that time I was in high school, so it said things like babysitting and you know, a good GPA and studying. I was trying to find anything I could that showed my work ethic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but to me, that's still that's the same process as far as going for a job. You're still preparing your resume. You know, what volunteer work you did, and you know, you're looking for you know letters of recommendation. And you know, I think having that experience in high school is probably what groomed me for the scholarship because the scholarship you're telling a story. It this is who I am, this is what I've done, and this is why I deserve the money or the opportunity that you have. Hmm. All right, yes. I, I'm going to sit with that. That feels very different from things I've done in the past, so uh, I think this whole process is, is uh, multi-layered for me because uh, definitely building confidence around 
what I have accomplished and what I've done. Um, and yeah, and, and, and telling the story maybe in a different way than I have in the past. Um, so that's and what I'm going to be working on. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> and I was going to say that too, and you know, having looked at your resume and the experience that you have in the medical field, and you know, some of the things that you're doing, that's some of the stuff you're going to want to talk about when they're interviewing you for your internship. And I think the more research you do regarding internships, the more that's going to cal calm your nerves, because then you're going to be aware of, you know, how many opportunities are out there, and then you feel like you get to be more selective and choose what you want rather than, I need an internship opportunity, let me get it, it's what's out there, what I want to do, and it just feels like you have more choices because you're doing the research, so your awareness, you're aware of what's really out there, and that's going to help build confidence. Awesome. Right. Okay, well, I'm, that's, that's what I'll be doing this week. All right, sounds good. All right, so um, I guess you said you're going to have your phone interview next Wednesday in the morning, and then we'll get together Wednesday evening, same time, uh, 7 p.m. Standard Pacific Time, and we'll follow up and see how that goes, and we'll take it from there. Sounds great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And for everybody watching, I just want to remind you um, that this is being sponsored by scholarshipmembershipsite.com. Um, Robin's been helping me learn how to use Google Hangouts so I can feel more comfortable interacting with more people. And we're getting ready. Um, I'm certainly going to open this up for general questions from the public. And I'm going to have my first Hangout uh, coming up next week on Tuesday at 7, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So uh, you certainly are welcome to join. There's two ways to do it. I would recommend getting on my emailing list. And the reason being is that as this organization and this group grows and people have more and more questions, I'm going to want to send out a survey to see what questions you want answered. And then this way it will help me prioritize them as far as what we're going to talk about. I'm going to continue to go ahead and do the one-on-one -on -one with Robin just because I think she's an excellent example for you know people who want to go to school and get their master's and they want to follow someone that they're doing. They want to see her doing it. It makes it easier for them or it's motivation for them. So I'm going to go ahead and continue that with her, but I'm going to add this as an extra service to help everybody else out. So please stay tuned, and uh, thank you for watching. All right, I'll talk to you soon, Robin. Have a great evening.